Hello guys, my name is Mark from jazzguitarlessons.net and welcome to this vlog. Today I want to share something a little bit, uh, I would say, alternative, but also do something that I found out that we we talk a lot about that there's very little applicable information out there, so let's get going. So number one, here's a backstory for this vlog. I recently watched a, a snippet of video coming from the Headspace app. Headspace is a, an app I have on my phone I've been using for probably five years. It's a meditation app. And now uh, probably some of you who are watching this are using Headspace because there's about 50 million subscribers on this app. So it's meditation, not in any uh, Buddhist sense, but in, in a sense of, you know, <laughs> shut up and stay silent for a while. And just that dude does me uh, very good. And in the Headspace app, there's this feature called the wake up. So every morning I go I wake up and I brush my teeth and I put it on and it's a little video. It can be someone taking care of house plants or someone being, you know, in this COVID 2020 being, I'm a work from home specialist and here are some tips to be more productive and, you know, keep your personal life separate from work. So I write all of this stuff. There's this composer last week that came in and he's telling about his process. So he says, oh, I'm a composer and here's what I do. I go to the piano and I find a groove and I, I bring this to a cassette tape. <laughs> I'm like, okay, why? You know, and then I will bring it to the mix and do this and put synths on top of it. I'm like, oh, it's cool. But he said one thing that was very, very interesting to me. He says, the biggest part, the biggest work and the biggest hurdle and challenge of his work is actually the, the judgment or the this is not good enough voice. Uh, and the gist of the work comes in acceptance, seeing self-doubt come up and going, yeah, all right, you know, do, do your thing, but I'm going to keep doing that, which I'm doing. All right. So I realized that we say this a lot. And that's why I, I don't know if I'll name this video that, but I wanted to call this video spirit of the moment, because ultimately that has to do a lot with when we go and improvise. I, I'm, you know, you know me from YouTube as a jazz instructor. So I like to teach standards and jazz concepts and techniques and improvisation. And in the middle of improvisation, we have a lot of these things happening to us, which means it's going to sound super simple and pretty dumb to some of you what I'm about to say, or it's going to sound super profound or not at all. I don't know. But either way, check this out. When you're improvising and you're doing something on B flat blues, right? as soon as you work up a line and then you become self-conscious of it and you apply judgment to it. So you go, ah, that wasn't that good. Guess where you're at. Now you're here. You're not here anymore. You're not even there. You're not connected. You're up here. And as soon as you lose it, your job is to get back and figure out a way back to get back in the moment of that music because that's where it happens. So, and that, that, <laughs> that goes, even if you think you played a, a good line, it's like you play something like, whoa, dude, that sounded amazing. Guess where you're at now. You're not even in the music. You're, you're up here thinking about that which happened a few seconds before. Or maybe you're at a jam session and you're nervous because now you're thinking about the song that you played before that you performed not so well and you're ashamed. And then that's that's disconnecting you from that moment. So ultimately, jazz improv comes back to being uh, at, its, at its best. It's becoming like a sort of a meditation because you have to stay in that moment, stay in the moment, stay in the moment and accept it. So there's a few things I drilled it down. It's like, Self-doubt slash judgment, which is the same thing. Um, uh, you can shed a light on this with acceptance. Just going, huh, look at that. I just played that. So instead of being caught up in it, having thoughts about it and getting back to it, you just go, ah, okay, that happened. Let's just see what's next. Let's keep going. You know, that's exactly how Pat Messini describes the way his mind works when he's improvising, which is fantastic, I think. So being from note to note, from moment to moment, right? So what I, I wanted to do quickly with this vlog is give you a precise set of techniques that actually I got from Kenny Werner, one of my favorite jazz pianists, who wrote, I, I knew him from the book before knowing him as a player, but then I saw him live, whatever. So Kenny Werner is probably a piano player in his 60s now. Uh, and he wrote this book, which I'm going to put here or put a link or a picture. I, <laughs> I was looking for my paper copy of the book, but probably I lent it. And when you lend books, they don't come back, uh, which is a good thing because it means the knowledge spreads, right? So I couldn't find my paper copy, but I read this book over and over several years ago. 
and he describes it's effortless mastery that's the title of the book and he describes four easy steps to be enlightened and be in the moment when you're playing or it's just <laughs> when he gave a talk about this he gave a conference he said uh, mr warner said yeah only four easy steps and he started to laugh at himself because that also comes from uh, little miss sunshine the movie where it's like you know inside every one of you there's a winner and there's a loser and in the, my 10 step program you can learn you know so it's pretty <laughs> It's pretty funny, but also there's way than more. There's more than one way to do that, which I'm about to explain. But I want to go over Kenny Werner's steps uh, quickly just now, uh, just because I think it's gold, and it might work for you, might not work. Maybe you'll need more steps, maybe you'll need less steps. But I'll show you what he says is a a good progression for being in a, in the moment when you're improvising. All right, so let's get going. So step one, step one, is just picking up the instrument, even in the book, he recommends, oh, by the way, this book comes with a CD, it used to come with a CD with meditations on it too, which I did, which were really cool. Um, so when he begins, he says, you know what, just even put the guitar down on your lap and just be in that space. So take a deep breath, you know, and reconnect and be, be here now, you know, the Ram Dass book or whatever of this hippie stuff. Then once you're confident you're in that zone, I think he calls it being the center or being in the zone or whatever he calls it, then just pick up the instrument. And even then he says just that might, your mind might start to spin and twirl. It's like, oh, my teacher in college, uh, you know, my dad never wanted me to play guitar or you know, that last time I made a fool of myself at that jam set. If it's the case, it's too, too much. If it stirs too much inside of you, put it back down. Your goal is not even to play guitar. Your goal is just to be in the zone. And in step one, he does it for piano because he's a pian piano player and a pretty good one at that, like a like legendary one at that. He says, put your f your five fingers on the keyboard. So for for us, I do I do this. You go in and you're objective is to remain in the zone you're well I point my it's not a third eye meditation it's just like you're here now you're right there you know and then you play one note with your first finger your index and you're not even attempting to to make it sound or whatever you just he describes it as almost like watching yourself watching your body do it for you and you're not even trying to control. It's like, oh, the finger knows how to play. It will play, you know. And doing that with finger two, finger three, and four. So it might take like five or ten minutes before you're done the four fingers. And then that's it. You do this on a given day. The next day you come back and you do it again, again, and again. And your goal is, can you stay centered in that zone, that frame of mind, that focused frame of mind, while putting your four fingers? Because, of course, when you put your third finger, you're going to think about that blues lick at that recording at that time where you played something fantastic while playing with friends or how you're ashamed that you can't play that lick yet all these judgments all these thoughts all the 1000 monkeys in your mind all the time all the time but go getting the telling them yeah 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 okay fine 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 but i'm here i am here now doing that that's step one all right pretty profound step two he says is uh playing anything so so you're just there breathing and your body will start to play chords and scales and more souls. You're not even trying to control it. You're not trying to play anything good or bad. There's no such thing anyway. You're just watching yourself play. So, ah, that's cool. Played that. Missing a note, wrong finger, thumb, of whatever. Doesn't matter. Huh? That's that. That's step two. Uh, but then you see when you're out of your focus, like, no, get back here. So, never mind the thousand monkeys. Stay focused. Stay focused. And then step three, which is, I think, my favorite. You try to play free play anything that you want on a form so it might be you put a backing track on like a f blues or whatever and you just jam and you're not even trying to control it when as soon as you sense yourself trying to get into of your typical licks you just go like no, no stay focused you're just there breathing and observing yourself playing that's pretty deep <laughs> and step four which i have to 
no shame in admitting I, I was never able to get there. He says you can stay in that zone while you're practicing. So you're learning something new. What are you learning? I don't know, a lick, a chord, a transcription, just a part of it. Then he goes at length. Well, I highly recommend that book. Like I highly, highly recommend that book. He goes at length in saying there's this triangle of practice that you get to learn something new, meaning you haven't mastered it yet, means that you will always sacrifice one side of the triangle while keeping the two other together. I'll give you an example. So the three, the three sides are complete. So the entire, you have a lick, right? You have a lick. So you'll either do the complete thing or you'll do it fast or uh, accurately. So if you do it fast and accurately, you're not going to play the entire thing. If you do it fast and um, uh, the entire thing, it's not going to be very accurate. If you do the entire thing accurately, it means it's going to be slower. So you always sacrifice one of the three. That's his perspective. So I will leave you with that idea. I think it's a fantastic way to, to look at other musicians and they will tell you, well, yeah, the biggest part of this is letting you of your own judgment of your own ideas, your own BS that you're saying, this is not good enough. And I'll leave you with that thought because that, that's what happened when I, I was probably about 19 or 20. I saw Mr. Warner in a, in a workshop and he just said that uh, says you know you start a solo on a standard you're like yeah you know and then it feels good you watch your bandmates and then then there's this voice in your head that's his word he said this little voice in your head goes it's not swinging enough and then all of a sudden the the rest of your solo looks like the last 90 minutes of the movie titanic uh, that, and everyone laughed because he's a pretty funny guy as well. So just keep that in mind. The, the, the learning of the scales and the songs or whatever has a lot to do with, you know, performing the, the, on the instrument fairly well and doing all of what you're, you're attempting to do. And, but not, not but or or. It's like it's an and. It's like and the more connected you are and the more you practice the acceptance of what's coming out and the less you judge, the easier it's going to get and the better you're going to play. And the more you just become sort of curious and playful about what's coming out. If you make a if you make a mistake, oh, that's interesting. What? How's that? You know, what should I practice? How did that sound? How did that make me feel? Or maybe I, when I play a wrong note, I always feel like a failure. It's like, oh, how about that? Maybe that's what you should examine and not practice more scales. You know, <laughs> to me, it's like if every time you play a wrong note, you feel like a failure. There's something bigger behind it at play in your subconscious. All right, on that note, I know <laughs> I filmed a few vlogs recently, so they're pretty, pretty, uh, I would say hashtag deep, uh, but it's really uh, the type of stuff I've personally have worked on and uh, a lot of my, my coaching students work on. By the way, if you're ready to take your playing to the next level and you'd like to you know, get into that type of stuff with me, I coach a handful of students. You can uh, book yourself on my calendar. We'll just get on a call, you know, shoot some stuff and determine if there's a good custom plan, a custom blueprint I can I can build for you to take your jazz guitar playing to the next level. So head over to nextlevel.jazzguitarlessons.net, nextlevel.jazzguitarlessons.net, totally free 15 minute call with me. And on that note, I will let you go. Have a really good rest of your week and I will see you soon on the website, jazzguitarlessons.net, improve your jazz guitar playing with a real teacher. Take care guys, have fun.